Hello everyone! Uh, when Levon Aronian won the 2015 Singfield Cup, Garry Kasparov posted his uh, famous tweet that uh, the chess world is a better place when Levon Aronian is playing well. And indeed Levon Aronian really is playing well. Uh, this is a game from round 6 of the Singfield Cup and he's playing against Wesley So. And uh, well, this game is really, really spectacular and I guess uh, Aronian decided to challenge Anand for the best game of the tournament after that game <coughs> Anand played against Caruana. So I, I'm interested to hear which game do you prefer, I mean, uh, which game is uh, better to your taste. Uh, but let's see the game. Aronian is white and uh, and Wesley So is black. Uh, we have d4 by Aronian, knight to f6, c4, e6, knight to f3. Uh, Wesley So transposes into the Queen's Gambit declined with d5, knight to c3, bishop to b4, we have a bishop to g5, h6, bishop captures on f6, queen captures on f6, and now queen to a4 check with an attack on the bishop on b4. So knight to c6 defending both threats, uh, e3, uh, Wesley castles, uh, bishop to e2, and now d captures on c4, and Daronian castles. He's not really in a hurry to pick up this c4 pawn as it can't really be defended. Uh, Wesley plays a bishop captures on c3, we have b, b captures on c3, and now bishop to d7. And only now does Aronian capture this pawn, so queen captures on c4. And uh, Wesley plays rook to c8. And this is a good move as the knight can now freely move uh, since the queen was kind of attacking this c7 pawn. And the rook will definitely become active on, on c8 after c5 is played in the future. <coughs> So we have rook a to d1, uh, rook f to d8, knight to d2, and this knight to d2 mo move, <coughs> this is a pretty standard move in positions like this, white wants to play f3 and e4, and uh, is also kind of threatening a tempo with knight to e4 uh, attacking the queen, so this could come in handy. Uh, we have knight to a5, queen to b4, now attacking the knight on a5 and also the b7 pawn, so Wesley stops this by simply playing b6, <coughs> and... Uh, this is the position that uh, I really enjoy. Uh, the entire game is, is great, but uh, what Aronian played in this position really shows why he is, uh, well, again, in the 2800 club. Uh, he plays bishop to a6 and uh, attacks this rook. And like I said, this rook uh, would have become really, uh, really active on c8 after c5 was played. So Aronian, uh, before he continues with his plan, decides that he wants to kind of misplace this rook on b8. So rook to b8, and only now does Aronian play knight to e4 with a tempo on the queen. Uh, we have queen to f5, and uh, now bishop to d3. And we have bishop to, uh, bishop to c6, because, well, the knight doesn't really have any good discoveries, and uh, Aronian plays a strong move here. He plays f3. Uh, we have bishop to captures on e4, and now f captures on e4, now opening this f file, which will prove to be quite deadly. Uh, Wesley plays queen to g5, going for this weak, weak e3 pawn, and uh, rook to f3, uh, c5, and of course Aronian doesn't want to capture on c5, uh, he wants this rook on b8 to stay in, in, inactive, uh, queen to b2, and now e5 by Wesley So, uh, rook d to f1, doubling up on the f-file, uh, c captures on d4, c captures on d4, and rook to b7, and uh, this rook to b7 move defends f7, and uh, well, this is this is a good move, and it also prepares rook to c7 to occupy this c file uh, for his own rook. Uh, we have d5 by Aronian, and now rook to c7. And uh, this is uh, what I really enjoy. Uh, do you see how many moves it took uh, to activate this rook? If this uh, rook was on c8, then it would have been active uh, all the time. So this bishop to a6 and then back to d3 idea was, was simply brilliant by Levon Aronian. And uh, this gained uh, Aranyan just enough tempos to, to continue with his plan. And uh, Aranyan is becoming kind of famous uh, for, <laughs> for winning brilliances by playing the, the move h4. And uh, this game is no different. Uh, he wants to win this uh, e5 pawn, but he can't really play rook to f5, you know, to, to attack the queen and the pawn because, because of this weak e3 pawn. So naturally he plays h4, now kicking the queen. And uh, the queen has to capture. Uh, if she moves to h5, then this uh, rook to f5 idea is definitely a possibility. So we have rook captures and uh, queen captures on h4, and queen captures on e5, attacking the rook on c7. Uh, queen to e7 defending, and now queen to g3. And uh, Wesley so plays uh, queen to c5. Again, ki uh, kind of threatening this e3 pawn if the rook ever moves. Uh, but. Uh, 
Aronen finds a, a brilliant move, and it's uh, from this position uh, to the end, it's blow by blow by blow by Aronen. He plays rook to f6, and this is, uh, well, extremely unpleasant. Uh, Aronen's idea is, uh, well, pretty simple. He wants to capture this h6 pawn and op open the h file. And uh, after the h file opens, it's, uh, it's a quick death for black. So Wesley tries to stop this with uh, pawn to h5. But now another blow by Aronian, he plays uh, rook to h6, and again rook cannot be captured, and now he's threatening rook captures on h5. And uh, it's not really easy to stop this, no nothing can, you know, come between this pawn, except maybe g g6, but this would be over quickly. Uh, so Wesley tries queen to c3, now protecting g7, and also attacking this bishop on, uh, on d3. Uh, but uh, Aronian simply captures it, uh, rook captures on h5. And uh, this bishop cannot be captured. If, uh, the, if the queen were to capture this bishop, then simply queen to h4 and uh, the game is over. And now threatening uh, checkmate on h8 and also threatening queen captures on d8 checkmate. Uh, so uh, two unstoppable threats. So after rook to h5, uh, Wesley tried, uh, tried g6. Now attacking will the rook, of course it cannot be captured, but now the queen is protecting h8. So queen to h4 isn't uh, deadly right away. Uh, but Aronian finishes the game uh, quite nicely. He plays e5, and uh, well, now the queen is no longer protecting h8, and in this position, Wesley so resigned. Uh, the bishop still cannot be captured. Uh, if you if you want to try to find out for yourselves uh, why the bishop cannot be captured, you're free to do so. It's not a it's not an easy continuation to find. Uh, so feel free to do it. And uh, for those of you who tried, I congratulate you. It was, it's a very silent move, and uh, yeah, you're a very strong player if you found it. Uh, but uh, after queen captures on d3, Aronian had in mind this rook to h3 move. And uh, now the threat of queen to h4 with this checkmate on h8 and the threat of capturing the rook is still in the game. Uh, so after something like uh, rook to f8, uh, queen to h4 now threatening checkmate on h8, and f5, uh, queen to h8 check. King to f7, queen to h7 check, king to e8, and simply queen captures on c7, and uh, well, uh, with these amazing central pawns and this rook ready to jump on h7, this would be over, well, very soon. For example, queen captures on d5 and rook to h7, and there's, there really aren't any moves for black to play here. So, yeah, definitely, definitely a brilliant game by Aronian, and uh, like I said, it's like he <coughs> challenges Anand uh, for who who played the best game this tournament, and uh, I hope that every every round will have at least one game like this, and uh, yeah, uh, Aronian is at the moment uh, tied with Magnus Carlsen and Anand for second place. Uh, first place is still held by the, by Vashir Lagrave, and uh, it's going to be a very very strong tournament, a very very you know very tight score <laughs> at, at the top so yeah that's it uh, thank you all for watching and I would I would like to thank Michael Keen and Frederick Sinhavi uh, for your contributions to my channel uh, I do appreciate it thank you very much and uh, well as usual you can check two of my previous videos here and that's it thank you all for watching and I will see you soon